Alright guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to head out to Boston in Massachusetts in America once again and we're going to have a look at another one of these Trillium beers that my mum and dad very kindly brought back with them from the States when they were over there. So as I say, back to Trillium Brewing and this time we're having a taste of the Congress Street. So this one is their IPA, it comes in at 7.2%, much like the Fort Point Paleo that I reviewed for you before, this one has a rating of 100 overall and within the style on rate beer it had an outstanding rating on Beer Advocate and it was also well into the four stars when I had a look at it on Untapped. Like I've told you before, Trillium Brewing is one of these white whale breweries. Everyone wants to try their beers and I've been very lucky to get a hold of some of these. So definitely looking forward to this one. The Fort Point Paleo was really good so I'm definitely looking forward to trying one of its bigger brothers and you will see me review a double IPA from them in a couple of videos time. So I hope you enjoy my take on this one and as always thank you for watching the videos. So yeah, I'll tell you a little bit about the history of this one before we get into the tasting. If you want to get straight to the tasting of course just fast forward all the usual links are in the description below that's the brewery website the link to my other Trillium reviews that I've done before no doubt there will be some more in the near future well there will be some more in the near future there's all the usual social media if you want to see more beer reviews do please consider subscribing to the channel the whole channel of course has a geography based tagging system so you can go into the home page and search for beer based on country city or state whatever it is you're interested in do check out the playlist of beers from different countries there is one there for all my American beer reviews that's constantly being added to and please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Trillium Brewing then before we taste the beer. So Trillium was opened back in March 2013 and the company was founded by JC and Esther Tetro and apparently Esther and JC started brewing beers just as a bit of a hobby to celebrate their marriage but they enjoyed it so much that they decided to turn professional. So the brewery were initially based mainly in Fort Point in South Boston and this early stage they only had a 10 barrel system but this site has since been upgraded to give them a 2,500 BBL output per year but they also have a second facility at Canton as of December 2015 which has 16,000 square feet and it brews 35,000 BBLs annually. In 2016 the brewery also began canning their beers and that increased their distribution quite a bit and they do say that their biggest challenge over the next couple of years is to manage their growth because the beers like I say have become very very sought after because they've you know this is one of the breweries who really helped make the New England IPA style which really is kind of uh, being raved about these days of course there's many good breweries over here in Europe doing them Brewski in Sweden of course Amar in Denmark uh, Omnipoyo in Sweden of course as well Cloudwater in England lots of different breweries doing this beer style but Trillium in America were one of the ones who really kind of kicked this off I believe Treehouse was the other one that a lot of people rave about as well but it's really cool to be able to try some of these beers for you and like I say I do hope that you guys enjoy my take on it because this is a real quite a real novelty thing for me to be able to do for you on the channel so yeah I really enjoyed the Fort Point Paleo so I'm definitely looking forward to getting stuck into its bigger brother so yeah like I said this one comes in at 7.2% ABV it's hopped with Galaxy and Columbus Galaxy of course is an Australian hop it usually gives you some kind of peachy passion fruity sort of thing if memory serves me correctly it's got a malt base of American two-row barley, white wheat, C15, dextrin and dextrose malts apparently and I believe it uses a house ale yeast, uh, house ale strain, uh, ale yeast strain I should say. I can't speak in this video tonight of course but yeah really nicely presented this one. It's using that typical kind of a uh, white label that we've seen from Trillium before and a lot of the breweries in Europe are actually copying this. Cloudwater to a lesser degree but I've seen a brewery over in Ireland called uh, Whiplash and they're kind of copying this almost a uh, white background artwork. It's just meant to be these kind of uh, haze for days IPAs, I think that's what Robert Hopsin calls a uh all of these kind of New England beers but yeah really quite similar in presentation to the other one that we've seen there you can see the nice uh, boxes on this one this one of course is named after the street that one of the breweries is on I forget whether it's the Canton one or the uh, the Fort Point one that this one's named after I guess it might actually be the Canton one uh, but yeah 7.2% ABV like I said very highly rated you can see there's the Trillium symbol down there I'm just checking that you're seeing this on the camera control but yeah Boston Massachusetts and it uh, should be really nice so I guess without further ado then let's get it out and we'll get on with the taste and like I always say the uh, in the description below you'll find the brewery website and things like that if you want to read up a little bit more on the brewery but you can smell you can smell some of that lovely passion fruit peachy character coming out of this beer just as you open it up 
Interestingly as well, the head on this one is a little bit more foamy than we had from the Paleo yesterday or the other day when, whenever I actually decide to film these beers. I filmed the Fort Point one yesterday. I'm doing them one a day just to kind of have a nice week if you like. But as you can see, this one's poured that typical sort of hazy golden orange colour. There's a solid half finger of a frothy white head on this one. It is kind of becoming a little bit more bubbly as it airs out. That maybe is just because uh, the beer's been transported on the plane uh, over from America, so maybe it does lose a little bit of the kind of gassy character. There's one or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and quite a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there, but you can really smell some of this nice passion fruity and citrusy character coming out. There's maybe a wee bit of peach in there as well, but if I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see that is pretty opaque. I think it's definitely fair to say, in terms of colour, this beer is a hazy kind of uh, golden yellow. It's not quite as rich in orange as I've seen some of them, more leaning towards the yellow side of things, but it looks really nice. So let's take a closer look at the aroma then and see how we get on. Yeah. You can definitely, you know, if you've drank any Australian IPAs, I was quite lucky to spend some time in Australia and there's a lot of nice hops coming out there. Victoria's Secret, Galaxy, various other kind of things. The Galaxy, of course, is the kind of staple out there, but you can really pick up that lovely passion fruit character. It's got a bit of the sharper peach about it as well, and you can pick that up in this beer straight away. There's a wee bit of an almost lemony citrus coming out of it. You can almost pick out just a little bit of a, maybe a tangerine in the background too, which is quite interesting. The Galaxy is a really pretty awesome hop. I have to say that. The Australians, I think, are going to be one of the next big ones when it comes to hops. They've got so much land and things like that. I'm sure you'll see Australia... Being, becoming a big hot producer over the next couple of years. You know, only 24, 25 million people in a country that's the same size as the uh, the mainland United States, you know. It's crazy. But that galaxy hop smells so good. Passion fruit, peaches, like I was saying. There's a little bit of a lemony and sort of tangerine citrus coming out of it. Of course, you've got a bit of that floral aromaticity. It's a little bit peppery as well. The Columbus always gives you this kind of little bit of a kind of peppery, floral, spicy character. But underneath... You can definitely smell some of the, the sort of white, wheaty, bready characters. You can smell a little bit of biscuit as well. And there's almost a little bit of oaty character. These dextrose malts and dextrin malts and things that they use in it, it does give it just that little bit of oaty character. Some European breweries, a lot of European breweries actually, with this New England IPA, like to use the dextrose and dextrin these days. But quite a few of them do actually use oats. Omnipoyo in Sweden, of course, are one with their Fato Morgana. They love using oats in their malt bases for the New England IPAs. But it smells like a lovely, lovely beer. As I always say, just take a bit of time and enjoy the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. I would say that this one really leans towards the quite sharp, tropical, fruity, juicy side of things more than anything else. But without further ado then, let's get stuck into this one. So this one's the Congress Street Double Dry Hopped and India Paleo from Trillium Brewing Company over in Boston, Massachusetts. Once again, thank you to my mum and dad for bringing this beer back with them. Let's get stuck in. Slanja Skull. Yeah. Straight away, I'll say that that's a bloody good beer. That's a pretty damn good beer, I have to say. It's There's no other way to summarise it. The malt base in this is, is really smooth. I mean, what I would say is, the Fort Point Paleo that I tried yesterday, or a couple of videos ago it will be for you guys watching, that was really good. This one for me, just with a little bit more of that, that just a little bit more presence from the malt base. That's, this is what it's all about for me. I mean, when it comes to IPAs and things like that, and I've said about black IPAs before, I do like it when the beer just has a little bit more balance. If it leans a little bit too much towards the hoppy side of things, yes, it can be good, but I think you get so much more if you find that kind of middle point, if you just find the sort of uh, symbiotic sort of relationship, if you can call it that, that sort of homeostasis kind of thing. If you just find that right balance with them, you can get so much more out of a beer. And this one just has that nice little malty presence that allows you to do that. Seven, eight percent tends to be ideal for these New England IPAs in my experience. I have had a few that have been around the nine percent mark and I have found that just a little bit heavy. I usually find if you're going up to that high, you do need a little bit of biscuit or caramel malt to kind of uh, 
to sort of balance that out a little bit. I think Brewski it was in Sweden, they did one that was a New England IPA and it was nine, I think it was the Conan double IPA, that was a, a nice 9% one and that was really pushing the boundaries of it. I think 9% is where you have to start adding a little bit of caramel milk to balance out the booze. But that's really damn good. It is pretty fresh as well. This can's only about three, maybe yeah, three, four weeks old at most. So it is pretty fresh. But yeah, let's focus on that a little bit more then. So yeah, in the middle of your palate, as you'd expect, you can feel that white wheaty bread character just underpinning the beer. On top of that, you start to get the kind of dextrosey dextrin flavours coming out. They almost come out as a little bit of an oaty character and right in the middle of your palate, you can feel a little bit of that almost a slightly sweet biscuity flavour and that really balances out the malt base as well. It just gives it a little bit more complexity and like I say, I always enjoy beers a bit more that do have that bit of malty complexity to them. It really just brings it out quite nicely. In the back corners of the palate, there's a wee bit of earthiness there. That's coming from the Columbus hop and as you come further forward you can feel there's a wee tiny bit of herbal quality to it but then right along the sides of the palate you've got that nice kind of dank slightly spicy uh, floral aromaticity around the front curve of the tongue there's a little bit of that lighter and kind of grassy note there's a wee bit of an almost um, I don't know if it's quite lemongrass but it's got a little bit of that sharper almost lemony quality to it but I tell you something this beer is really nice and you can feel these nice, uh, these lovely tropical fruits coming out from that Australian hop. That's one thing I always loved about the Galaxy Hop and drinking these, uh, uh, drinking the IPAs down in Australia. The Galaxy Hop gave you a hell of a lot of nice fruity notes. I'd love to see some of these breweries experiment with the New Zealand hops. New Zealand, of course, is, it's one of the best hop countries in the world. There's no doubt about that. I'd love to see them using the likes of Nelson Sovine and uh, Rewaka and all these kind of things in the New England IPAs. That would be pretty damn awesome. but that's really damn good. As I always say, just behind the front curve of the palate, that's where you get this little oily bubble where the nice fruity uh, parts of the hop come out, where these nice alpha acids start to come out and fruity esters and things. It's not alpha acids, I'm talking rubbish. It's the fruity esters that start to come out. So just behind the front curve of the tongue with this one, you can feel there's a wee tiny little bit of grapefruit character there, but mainly it's a passion fruit. That's kind of forming the linchpin of the fruity notes in the beer. As the flavour progresses a little bit more, you start to get a wee bit of the peach. You can feel a little bit of just that sharper note coming out. And there's almost just a little bit of a kind of orangey tangerine flavour in there as well. A lot of folks say you can use azaka and uh, sometimes amarillo as a substitute for Galaxy, but I would say, well, maybe not Amarillo, and uh, Citra and things like that, but I always find the uh, the passion fruity character and the peachy sharpness that you get from the Galaxy, it just makes it completely unique. I don't know why people would suggest that you uh, substitute these hops in, because the Galaxy really is just something completely different. But it's lovely, the beer just balances so well. And it seems to be that they like to use Columbus as their sort of bittering hop, if you like, and then use the uh, use one of the other ones as a flavour hop. And the Galaxy really does work quite well. I'm actually just surprised that they're using an Australian hop for this because there's such a variety of American ones. So it is quite cool that you're starting to see this kind of cooperation between countries with beer. It's always it's one of the things the things you want to do in the world generally, but to see it in craft beer is pretty awesome as well. But that's really nice. If you get the chance to try this beer, have a go at it. I'm sure on tap, it's it's pretty damn awesome. In the can, it's really damn good, but I'm sure on tap, it's even better. It's just got a nice good bit of hoppy bitterness to it as well. I just love how everything goes together in this one. Like I said, the fork point was good, but when you've got this a little bit more, um, when it's a little bit more complex in the malt base and it's just the bigger brother, then it just has a little bit more about it and that's what really gets me about this one. In terms of the mouthfeel then, I'd say it's mid-bodied, carbonation smooth, it's got a really nice balance in the malt base between the sweetness and the smoothness that you'd expect of the style. I do like that little bit of a sweet edge that it has, that comes out a little bit more in the aftertaste. There's a good bit of hoppy bitterness there, like I said, a wee bit of earthiness in the back corners of the palate, some of the peppery spice and then you've got these nice juicy fruity notes in this one as well. There's a little bit of oily character to this one as well and that's probably just to do with the fact that it's the bigger brother and it's a little bit more kind of boozy than the pale ale. The pale ale in fairness was 6.6%, this one's only 72 and I think the double IPA is into the 8 somewhere so you'll see me review that in a couple of videos time but for me 
This one's really good. As I say, Fort Point was good, but for me, this one is better. So we'll see if the double IP is better in a few videos' time. But a really damn good beer, and I'm glad that I got to review this one for you here in the channel. So I hope you've enjoyed my take on it. And hopefully, I can get out to Boston and try some of these Trillium beers on tap sometime. But it's been really cool to do this video for you, and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. So, yeah, once again, thank you for watching. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Do check out my social media. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below, and let me know what your favourite beers are from Trillium and do let me know some of the other New England IPA breweries that I should be having a look at but thank you once again to my parents for bringing me over this six pack to review for you and I hope you guys watching at home are enjoying it so slide just now and I will catch you guys very soon the Congress Street an IPA with really awesome if you love the Galaxy Hop if you love passion fruit and tropical fruits then this is one that you really are going to enjoy so make sure you try some of the Trillium beers if you get the chance they're not really very widely available outside the Boston area though so if you're in that area make sure you go and check out the brewery until the next time slash just now and I will catch you guys very soon cheers